Jet pumps. When sizing a pump for private water supply, the daily water requirement is 60 gallons per person. This is a shallow well pump. Its depth can be 25 foot at sea level. This particular well is 21 and a half foot in depth. And this water source must be 50 feet away from a septic field. This foot valve comes equipped with a screen to keep out sediment and also keeps the vertical suction pipe primed. A typical bath and a half would require a well yield of 9 gallons per minute from the above situated jet pump. This is an aquifer of water. When the pump is pumping water, it develops drawdown, which is the distance in feet or meters that the aquifer of water lowers. It actually develops a cone, which goes down to the drawdown level, which must be above the foot valve. This is a pitless adapter, which is basically an easy quick connect or disconnect. This enables you to pull the pump out via the snare pipe and wire A. And this is installed below the frost level, usually around 8 to 10 foot in depth. This is a 4 inch well casing. This well cap should be installed at least 1 foot above the ground to avoid undesirable fluids from entering the well. Here is an illustration of the pitless adapter with a shallow well pump. There is a wire attached to the pitless adapter that when pulled will detach the drop pipe from the horizontal pipe feeding the house. This is the top of the casing and has a 1 8 inch hole to help purge any gases that might be trapped below in the well casing. This is series 160 polyethylene pipe typically used on well systems. It is rated for only 130 degrees Fahrenheit and comes in 1 to 300 foot coils, so it is perfect for underground services. This polyethylene service should grade downwards towards the pitless adapter to ensure that the pipe stays primed. Let's follow this polyethylene service pipe into the mechanical room. Here's an example of a shallow well jet pump. As the pump runs and creates negative pressure in its pump casing, this is where the volute is cased. Atmospheric pressure acting on the water service in the well causes water to flow up the drop pipe through the pump and becomes pressurized for the system. There's an example of maximum and practical lift, maximum theoretical. Here, the polyethylene service pipe is double clamped to the main valve. A check valve is installed on the system to protect the series service pipe from weakening, especially the clamp. It also assists in holding the prime in the pump housing or the volute. This pick depicts the 13.2 gallon diaphragm tank and half horsepower jet pump in our SAGE shop. A centrifugal pump works on Bernoulli's principle. Most half horsepower, horsepower pumps are set to run on 115 volts. This particular model is only a half horsepower, yet it can switch from 115 volts to 230 volts as illustrated on the factory wired stamp. This is our disconnect switch. It's ideal to use 240 volts as you get better amperage. This allows the motor to run cooler. Small, smaller wiring is required and the motor will start up quicker. This wiring diagram illustrates how you can switch the voltage from 230 to 115 volts if required. It's usually stamped right on the motor of the pump. The pressure gauge is set at 50 psi, which is the maximum pressure this system is set at. 
Here is the prime plug. So if you want to prime your pump on new installation, you remove the prime plug. You fill the pump and piping completely full of water, replace the prime plug, open a faucet to vent the system, start the motor, water will be pumped in a few minutes. Let the system operate for several minutes to flush the system. Close the faucet and allow the pump to build up pressure in the tank. When the pressure reaches the cutout switch or cutout setting of 50 psi, the motor will stop. This hole is to vent air from the pump and suction piping when water is being added. When water flows out, install a vent plug and finish filling the pump. This is the one inch drop pipe. Practical suction lift at sea level is 25 foot. Deduct one foot of suction lift for every thousand foot of elevation above sea level. A reading of 19 inches mercury on the vacuum gauge on the suction side of the pump will tell you that you have a suction lift of almost 21 and a half feet. 19 inches times 1.13 feet equals 21.55 feet. If this gauge shows a very high vacuum of 22 inches or more, this will then indicate that the end of the suction pipe is buried in mud, the foot valve is stuck closed, or the pump is not strong enough. This particular drain plug is for draining the casing. This pressure switch is typically set at 30 to 50 psi. Turn the range nut or the big spring down for a higher cut in pressure or up for lower cut in pressure. Turn the differential nut or small spring down for higher cutout pressure or up for lower cutout. This is how you adjust the pressure ranges of the pump. This pressure switch senses water pressure from the casing through an elastic diaphragm house in the metal frame. When the gauge reaches 50 psi, the pressure switch should shut the pump off. To prevent thermal overload or cycling of the pump, the run cycle should be at least two minutes to ensure the pump dissipates the waste heat in the pump. The pump should not cycle more than 25 times per hour. This diaphragm pressure tank is pre-charged with air that is 2 psi below the cut-in pressure of the pressure switch. As you can see, it's factory pre-charged at 20 psi, 2 psi below the 30 psi cut-in switch. This is the discharge pressure pipe coming from the volute casing. Here is a hose bed used to test the water and purge the system. This pressure relief valve is usually set at 10 psi above the cutout pressure. In this particular case, the hot water tank temperature pressure relief valve may blow off as a check valve has been installed in the system to prevent the polyethylene service clamp from weakening. In this case, or now that it is a closed system, an expansion tank has been installed to prevent the temperature pressure relief valve from blowing off. This finishes part one for shallow well jet pumps. Let's take a look at an example of a deep well jet pump by attaching a jet assembly to a regular pump. The jet assembly allows the pump to provide maximum suction lift and water capacity in a small package. Here you can see the jet assembly on the vertical 
location. It can be attached to the pump or below the pump. Here's the inch and a quarter suction line and one inch drive line. In this system, the jet assembly is installed in the well. Let's go further down the well, rotate around, and we'll take a look at the jet assembly. The water coming from the pumps and power is delivered down the one inch drive line to the nozzle of the Venturi as illustrated on the right. When the water flows through the Venturi fitting, it develops a negative pressure in the water of the well and induces well water to the flow to the inlet of the Venturi and up the inch and a quarter suction pipe. It's also possible to put a 35 foot tailpipe or attach it to the bottom of the water inlet to add efficiency and depth to the well. This ends both on jet pumps, shallow well pumps, and deep well pumps. For further information, look at your modules.